This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but more on that later. Today, I have two really exciting Cybertruck updates to share with you. First of all, as confirmed by Joe Tegmeyer on YouTube, um, Tesla has officially started assembly and installation of the massive nine ton Gigapress at Giga Texas. And this Gigapress will soon make the underbody castings for the Cybertruck. Secondly, Tesla's chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen, was recently interviewed by Ryan McCaffrey on the Ride the Lightning podcast. And he shared a few interesting details about the Cybertruck that I wanna share. So let's dive into these exciting details and discuss also when we might see the Cybertruck actually hit production. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. The Tesla Cybertruck is by far the most anticipated Tesla vehicle yet, with likely well over 1.5 million pre-orders, and it's exciting that Tesla has begun installing a very important piece of manufacturing equipment for this truck, the 9-ton Gigapress. Like the Model Y, we know that the Cybertruck front and rear underbodies will be die cast. And thanks to this recent Giga Texas drone video posted by Joe Tegmeyer on his YouTube channel, you can see that assembly of this massive machine has begun. I definitely recommend that you subscribe to Joe's YouTube channel for more updates about Giga Texas. And I'll put a link to this full drone video um, down in the video description if you'd like to check that out. When it comes to how long it will take Tesla to get this uh, press operational, according to Joe Tegmeyer's estimates, it should take Tesla about a month or so to get this all assembled, and we could see the first die cast underbodies being made by mid-February. These would be test underbodies. And by sometime in March, Joe estimates that the Gigapress should be fully functional and ready for production. Moving on to other Tesla Cybertruck news, Tesla's chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen, was recently interviewed by Ryan McCaffrey on the Ride the Lightning podcast. And among all the various topics that Ryan and Franz discussed, the Cybertruck was a big part of that conversation. I definitely recommend that you listen to the whole interview, which I will link in the video description below because um, they talk about a lot more than just the Cybertruck. However, I do wanna highlight some of the various aspects and things about the Cybertruck that they discussed and a few important things that were revealed. However, before I do that, I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. If you are thinking about installing a solar and a battery backup system, or if you currently have such a system, you definitely need to check out Span. Unlike traditional electrical panels, the Span Smart Panel allows you to monitor and track your energy usage and solar generation remotely through an easy to use iOS or Android app. Also, when combined with a battery backup system like a Tesla Powerwall, it can help you extend your battery backup time by somewhere around 40% on average. Find out more and get a quote at span.io or click the link in the video description. And if you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so Span knows that I sent you. Okay, moving over to the Franz von Holzhausen interview um, on the Ride the Lightning podcast, here are some of the things that Franz recently shared about the Cybertruck in this interview. First of all, on the topic of the stainless steel exterior of the Cybertruck and maintenance and keeping that looking nice, Franz mentioned that you should be able to basically buff out any scratches um, that get put into the stainless steel exterior. On that topic, the host Ryan asked Franz whether or not the Cybertruck would have a brushed stainless steel finish um, like the DeLorean did or if it's going to be something different. And Franz talked about the fact that it's not going to be a brushed finish like a refrigerator or like the old DeLorean cars, um, but it is an intentional finish that Tesla does apply to it. Now we'll talk more about this finish in a minute. It's actually the way they finish the metal. It's not actually a layer of anything on the stainless steel. Now, since we're on the topic of the stainless steel exterior of the Cybertruck, I do wanna briefly talk about why a stainless steel exterior for a truck is so cool and how this is gonna be so beneficial for the owner. Obviously work trucks are abused in their work environments and it's expected that a work truck will have dings, scratches, et cetera in the paint. Um, but with a cyber truck, not only will the stainless steel itself be more resistant to scratches and dings, et cetera, but if you do get these scratches, as Franz talked about and as I've talked about in the past, and stainless steel in general, you can buff out those scratches. When it comes to the grade of stainless steel that will be used on the Cybertruck, we don't know the exact 
alloy, uh, but we do know that it's going to be 300 series cold rolled stainless steel, which of course should be many times more durable than a traditional truck exterior. Now, moving back to that podcast interview, Ryan asked Franz whether or not Tesla was going to offer tinted clear coat finishes for the Cybertruck so you could slightly change the color of the Cybertruck exterior. Franz mentioned that they did experiment with some finishes, and of course, an owner could always wrap their Cybertruck if they wanted to change the color. But at the end of the day, as Franz talked about, when you add a clear coat or a painted finish on a material, in his words, quote, it just then basically takes away from the idea of putting the hardest thing on the outer surface. He reiterated, we have played around with some finishes, but right now the stainless is the winner. Now they talked a lot more about the Cybertruck and we'll move on to that, but I just wanted to briefly at this point in the interview talk about the fact that Ryan did ask Franz whether or not we could see a cyber car in the future. And Franz mentioned to that question, possibly. So I don't know if I'd call that really a strong confirmation at all, but the fact that Tesla has thought about it and that Franz didn't completely say that it's not a possibility, I think there's still a possibility that we could see a cyber car maybe even a cyber van or something like that in the future. I think it would be popular. I would sure love to drive some kind of cyber car, uh, maybe a cyber car hatchback or something in the future. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Next, Ryan asked Franz whether or not um, the design for the Cybertruck was finished. And Franz said, basically, yes. And then he went on to reiterate, we never really have a pencils down kind of thing. We work consistently through the entire process and we're constantly working on every detail and the refinement of that. And we learn things through the engineering phases and manufacturing development phases that we can improve on, and so we do. The next topic that Franz and Ryan discussed has to do with how you will open the Cybertruck doors. And as you know, the initial Cybertruck design had door handles that retracted flat into the body like the rest of Tesla's vehicles. But more recently, we learned that Tesla has removed the exterior door handles altogether, and the production version will not have door handles. Within that thought, Ryan asks, so are they, talking about the Cybertruck doors, going to function similar to the Model X front doors where it's going to sense the key fob and pop open for you? Franz confirmed that that was the case by saying yes. And then Ryan asked if that would be for the front and back doors. And Franz said possibly in the back, but there are buttons on the B pillar and the C pillar. So as it sits right now, when you walk up to the Cybertruck, it looks like if you have the key in your pocket, you're the owner, the front door will auto present for you, which is going to be pretty interesting. In addition, there are buttons on the B and C pillars where you can just simply touch there and it'll open the car if it's unlocked. And while I personally prefer door handles, this is an interesting design that will give the Cybertruck a more clean exterior. The next topic that was discussed by Ryan and Franz had to do with yoke steering on the Cybertruck. Tesla recently added the choice to choose between a yoke or regular steering wheel when you order a Model S or X, but that was not originally the case. Tesla used to only offer yoke steering wheel for the S and X. When it comes to the Cybertruck, their prototype images do feature a yoke, but will that make it to production? Ryan asked Franz whether or not the production Cybertruck would have a yoke, and Franz didn't directly answer that question, but he did say that the yoke makes a lot of sense, and basically from these comments, it appears like Tesla is definitely still making that decision, but they're at least considering going with a yoke for the Cybertruck. The next topic that was brought up has to do with new features for the Cybertruck. So on that topic, Ryan asked, are there features on the Cybertruck that we don't know about yet? And Franz mentioned, I think there are some features. I'm not going to talk about them, but I think they will be pleasant surprises. And I think they're the right things for the product. Now, the Cybertruck was first revealed back in November of 2019. So it's been several years since it came out. And since then, there have been a number of things that have changed, like, for instance, the removal of door handles and the fact that um, while the prototype had no exterior side view mirrors, um, the production version will have side view mirrors, at least initially until certain laws change, and then maybe it'll be replaced by cameras in the future. In addition, when the Tesla Cybertruck was first unveiled, there was going to be a single motor version, a dual motor version, and a tri-motor version. But later on, we learned that Tesla was going to have a quad motor version. And in late 2021, Elon Musk confirmed that initial production, at least at that time the plan was for initial production to be for the four motor variant. Around that same time on Twitter, Elon Musk talked about the fact that the Cybertruck would also feature four wheel steering, which is of course a feature that is available on the Hummer EV. So it's kind of exciting to see that is going to be a part of the Cybertruck as well. Something else that I covered in a video a while back, and I'll link to that in the video description, but 
there was a patent application that got published that actually gave us a peek into the user interface of the Cybertruck and also revealed a few details, which I'd like to briefly highlight as well. Like for instance, we got a view of the possible off-roading user interface for the Cybertruck. And as you can see here in this mode, you should be able to have front and rear camera angles uh, present on the screen and also the pitch and roll angles of your vehicle displayed on the screen. In addition, you should be able to see the PSI of each of your tires, the torque at each wheel and the height at which the suspension is set. We also learned from this patent application that the Tesla Cybertruck should have some smart trailering features. And you can see that the Cybertruck should have great camera angles to help you back up to connect to a trailer. And it should show you how many feet away from the hitch that you are as you back up. When it comes to what the Cybertruck will actually cost when it comes out. Back in 2019, of course, the original pricing was for the single motor rear wheel drive version to be at $39,900. $10,000 more than that for the dual motor all wheel drive version and $69,900 for a tri-motor version. But a lot has changed since 2019 when it comes to material cost, etc. And I like others believe that when the Cybertruck hopefully comes out later this year, it should cost more than what they talked about back in 2019. I think it's also very possible we'll never see that single motor version of the Cybertruck. And since it appears like Tesla will start with a quad motor version of the truck, it will almost certainly be well over $80,000 for that initial version. I would like to be wrong on that. And if Tesla can introduce the Cybertruck quad motor version for less than 80,000, that would be incredible, but I don't think that's very realistic, especially when you consider how large the battery pack is going to have to be for this Cybertruck to have um, 500 plus miles of range, for instance, for the tri-motor version. Now, when it comes to when I believe this Cybertruck will actually start production, I estimate that by the middle of this year, we should start seeing initial test production start. And then I estimate that official series production could happen sometime in the fall of this year. At the end of the day, I don't expect Tesla to make a large volume of Cybertrucks here in 2023. And I believe 2024 will be the year of the ramping of the Cybertruck. And that's when I believe we'll start to see the Cybertruck take over market share from Ford, Ram, and GM, et cetera. I'll definitely be keeping my eye out for more Cybertruck news. And as I hear that, I'll likely have more videos in the future. So if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, I definitely recommend that you subscribe so you'll know when I put out new videos. And I do want to thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. I want to say a special thank you to Span once again for sponsoring this video and also to my Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make videos like this possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.